One of the great sponsors of the Best Ball Family of Podcasts is Atomic Golf. If you are a golf course, a golf brand, a group of friends getting together for a buddy's trip, and y'all want some custom ball markers, divot repair tools, trophies, things like that, check out AtomicGolf.club, or you can follow them on Instagram, at Atomic Golf, and be sure to tell them that you heard about it on a Best Ball podcast. I said how I've had you know all these players get close over the last week. Um somebody's due for some reason that must have sparked something in the sun and he pulls out his phone and or actually he sparked something in the dad it was the dad who pulled out his phone which was even more surprising and he gave it to the son and he told him to record him he uh gets up to the tee box he doesn't take a bunch of practice swings he doesn't you know take a bunch of time he just steps up hits the ball and you see oh my he hit a good shot <laughs> then all of a sudden you see like Oh, he hit a really good shot. And then you see it hit the ground and start rolling. And you're like, oh, my gosh, go in the hole. And then it goes in the hole. And my big self starts celebrating and dancing all over the place and hugging him. I think I hugged him before his son did. And I'm like, how amazing is that? That they get together for a golf trip, which for fathers and sons can be just such special moments. And they were given a memory that is going to last them forever. Hello, and welcome to the inaugural edition of the Caddy Tales podcast. I'm Mark Militz, known by many people on X as Mark the Caddy. And uh, I am just excited to be able to talk some golf and some caddy life business with you, share some good stories, and have a fun time doing it. Today I'm joined by my good friend Nick Bartz, a fellow caddy, someone that I get to work alongside uh, quite a bit, and he is going to be joining us regularly to help share and fill in some of the spots that I miss and to add a, a, a even more to it. So how are you doing this morning, Nick? Good, good. A little cold this morning, Mark. Uh, yeah. I got I, I got out to my car this morning. It wouldn't start, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, golf season seems very far away as we start this podcast. For yeah. those listening at home, especially those of you in warm weather climates, we are about 30 below with the wind chill today. So uh, it's the middle of January and golf season for us starts in about three months, but it might as well seem like uh, three years or more right now. But uh, as you can see, I am wearing my lion sweatshirt today representing after uh, the first playoff win since I was in high school. Nick here is a local. And so he is, uh, he is a Packer fan, and he's probably equally excited, aren't you, Nick, about yeah. your big win yesterday? Yeah, I didn't see it coming, but yeah, go Pack, and uh, we'll, we'll look forward to taking the Lions down in the NFC Championship. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, if that happens, if that game happens, it's going to be uh, uh, just one of the best days of my life. Anyways, uh, as you can tell by me saying that Nick is a local, we are caddies here in the great state of Wisconsin, Southeast Wisconsin. And we work at a resort here that has a few courses and just so um, privileged and blessed by that opportunity to be able to get out on a beautiful course every day and to meet so many wonderful people. Mm -hmm. You know, some people who are listening to this pod today might have already been uh, introduced to me through my account on X, or what many people still call Twitter. A little bit about me. I uh, stumbled into caddying five years ago after a really rough time in my life. I made some really poor choices. I went through a period of anxiety and depression, and that just snowballed one thing after another. And I found myself in need of a fresh start. And out of desperation, I really say more than anything, I stumbled into caddying as my family made a move from Michigan to Wisconsin. And I thought it was something that I was going to do as a stopgap, something for a very short period of time as I took care of feeding my family and figuring out next steps. But it's something that I fell in love with very quickly. 
Uh, not only has it been something where I have been able to pay the bills, but it's also uh, been something where I've just experienced a great deal of renewal. And so I like already sharing those stories and a bit about me on social media, and uh, it seemed natural to maybe expand that and do so in a little more long form here on a podcast. Uh, Nick, why don't you let the listeners know a little bit about yourself and uh, how long you've been caddying? I mentioned I'm uh, entering like my fifth year here. Uh, what about you? Yeah, so uh, I'll be entering my 14th year, uh, which is unreal. Uh, I never would imagine I would have lasted that long when I first started, but uh, I was in college when I first applied for the job and uh, you know, I had an interest in golf and had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. And um, so I was like, why not give this a shot? And uh, it's stuck. So, yeah, no, yeah. you know, I, I think about the nearly 200 caddies that we work alongside with every year and everybody has a little bit different story. Some guys are college students who really do use it for like a summer job for a year or two. And then mm -hmm. uh, there are people like you who, uh, maybe didn't plan on it turning into such a long-term thing, but you find yeah. yourself there 14 years uh, later. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're kind of the backbone of the program. Those guys who are just uh, so familiar with yeah. uh, the course and with working yeah. with players. And uh, without you guys, I think it would be a much more difficult job. You know, what do you enjoy about it? What keeps you coming back year after year? Uh, I mean, so... I mean, the weather obviously is beautiful in the summertime in, in Wisconsin. Um, I love golf. I uh, love being on the course. I uh, love hanging out with caddies like yourself. Uh, some days more than others, but, um, but yeah, uh, like there's just so many things that, that I love about caddying and, and I miss it immensely in the wintertime, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's it's an awesome job, honestly. Yeah, it's really nice to have November and December off after our season ends, especially because the holidays are going on and the body needs a break. But I think we're at that period now where we start to miss it. It's so funny. At the end of October, caddies are just yeah. ready to be done. And yeah, it's no hard doubt. to envision yourself missing it. But uh, mm -hmm. then then you get a little further into the off season, and that itch starts to, to really happen. You know, um, yeah, you are you are one who is passionate about the game of golf. You play a lot in your off time and, um, you know, caddying yeah. is just an extension of something you love. Now I have grown into enjoying and loving the game of golf more, but I didn't come to it with that same kind of passion. And again, you know, everybody has their different things that uh, bring them to it. And the things that I love and appreciate are maybe a little bit nuanced, but at the end of the day, we get to walk a beautiful place. We get to interact with players. We get to be a part of a game, a part of people's fun times, something that's kind of a pinnacle of their summer. Uh, you really, really can't beat it. Do you ever feel the pull to get what uh, I'm going to say in quotes here, a real job? You know, even though the money for caddying could be very good, more so than you could make, at a factory, mm -hmm. perhaps, uh, even though uh, it's uh, got really long hours. I think there's still some people in our lives or in the community who don't view it necessarily as a real job or as a career. Do you ever feel that kind of pressure? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes. Uh, so actually, I took a year off from caddying uh, probably about five years ago. And I worked at a cheese factory. Um, and I mean, it paid the bills. It was, it was nice, especially in the winter time, you know, when things dry up a little bit. Um, but I mean, I didn't love it. And I got up every day and, you know, I just didn't love what I was doing. And that's one of the best things about caddying too, is that like you, you get up, you go to work and you, you don't hate your job, you know, you, you kind of enjoy it. So yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. You know, we know many people who were very successful in other facets of life, uh, corporate mm -hmm. America or, you know, whatever it was, who said, 
you know, I'm just done with that. And I want some freedom and I want a different kind of lifestyle. And they found caddying and uh, they don't miss their former nine to five very much at all. One of the things that I always find funny is we get to meet a lot of people who make some really good money and have jobs probably with a great deal of responsibility, maybe prestige. And I can't count how many times I've been walking down a fairway with some guys who look at each other like, I want to just leave that all behind and come and walk a golf course. Now they're romanticizing it. They're not at the end of a a long day with heavy bags on their shoulders. But uh, I always think that's kind of neat that uh, people come and they're like, this isn't a bad place to spend a day or to spend a summer, to spend a life. It, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I think that's kind of underrated about the job too, is that um, as bad of a day as you could possibly have, like, you know, not every day is amazing, but um, at the end of the day, you're not going to like take, take it home. You know, you're not going to lose sleep over what happens on the golf course necessarily. So um, yeah. I think that's an underrated part about it. It, it it's totally underrated you know in my former life the anxiety that i would have on a regular basis just even from like how many emails i was going to get at night or mm-hmm. what those emails were going to be about or you know what responsibilities were piling up or what criticism might be faced or whatever it was yeah. um that that does some damage to you yeah. and you you carry the the warts and the scars from it. And, you know, the thing that I really love about caddying amongst many things is let's say you have a loop and this is rare with somebody you just don't click with at all. Somebody who's maybe rude or dismissive or whatever. Mm -hmm. And five hours, you say goodbye to them and you don't have to see them again. And maybe on the car ride home, you grit your teeth a little bit, or you think about what you could have done differently or you complain Mm -hmm. about them or whatever. But before the night's over, it's like, all right, it's done. And then, and then you can show up the next day and meet one of the coolest people you've ever met and Mm -hmm. uh, feel like you're on a party for five hours. So you just never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Well, those listening at home, you know, that's just a little bit of an introduction and backstory to me and Nick. You'll be getting a lot more of that in the weeks and the months to come. And I look forward to kind of sharing this journey with Nick. And each week we'll be bringing in some other guests, some people who are also fellow caddies to talk about their experiences. I'm looking forward to having some of the players that I've caddied for come on and talk about it from their perspective and uh, what it's been like for them to get to walk alongside us for five hours. Hopefully we'll be talking to some professional caddies and the differences that they experience in their loops and um, a whole myriad of other guests. And we're going to have a lot of different kinds of topics. And uh, one of the things that I do want to touch on right now, though, Nick, is, is, helping people to maybe understand what we do and don't do. And specifically what I'm talking about is people watch golf on television. And for the vast majority of golfers, they've never had a caddy before. And the only time they've seen a caddy is in that relationship that they see on television with somebody like a Tiger Woods and his caddy. Or In reality, I... I now, I've never been in that setting myself, but I think there's just not a lot of similarities between our day-to-day and what a professional caddy like that is doing. Yeah. Can you help the listener maybe understand what it is we do, what we don't do, and how it might be different from what they see on television? Yeah, so, I mean, our our job is basically just to uh, get get – you know, a couple guys around the golf course that we've seen uh, thousands of times. Um, whereas on tour, you know, it's a, it's a new golf course every week. Um, so that's different. Uh, our players are probably looking for uh, putt reads every single time almost. Most of the players read their own putts probably like 90% of the time. Um, they really ask the caddy for help. Um, also, I guess it varies, varies between players. Um, we, we have to get yardages. Um, and once again, I'm sure this varies between players, but I've heard lots of 
tour players like to get their own yardages. I don't know if they don't trust their caddy that much, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So. Well, one thing I think you're touching on there, Nick, is, and this is not a disparagement towards the people that we caddy for. We see all different skill levels, but at that level of golf, let's just assume for the sake of argument that the level of competency golf competency is at a level that we don't really get to experience, but maybe once or twice a season. Yeah. And so those players are much more independent. Mm -hmm. And my guess is, is that the role that a professional caddy plays also becomes one very much of emotional and psychological support. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and for us that, that comes into play, but there's yeah, certainly going to be those players who won't hit a ball until they look at you and get some sort of instruction. So much yeah. so that sometimes I wonder, well, what do they do on the many rounds of golf they play a year when they don't have a caddy? Um, yeah, exactly. That's great. They take advantage of what we have to mm -hmm. offer. Um, another thing that I think is actually more difficult about the kind of caddying we do is let's say uh, a caddy on the professional tour tells the player it's a hundred yards away and there's some wind in the face. And so maybe it's playing around 110 yards and that player on the tour grabs out his 110 yard club. What does that caddy rightly assume the ball is going to go around 110 yards? Yeah. Yep. But for, us throughout the season sometimes that ball goes 50 yards and sometimes it yeah. goes 150 yards and yeah uh, everywhere in between not often 110 yards and mm -hmm. what happens is um sometimes they look at you like why did that happen what what did that uh, <laughs> What went wrong? Did you just tell yeah. me the wrong information? And, yeah. you know, there's not a level of consistency there, uh, sometimes a level of skill that's commensurate with the expectations that might exist. Um, yeah. Yeah. I get a I also, kick out I, of... Oh, go ahead. I also, I also love when the player uh, goes back to his buddies and he's like, I'm playing way more than 110. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. Because yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, I often you see players kind of judging their shot or their putt based on what the person in front of them did. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. you're making some assumptions there that may not be right assumptions, like yeah. that that guy hit the ball the way he was supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just would say that uh, the vast majority of us just aren't quite good enough at golf to um, have that kind of consistency or expectation. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'll see very often players come and uh, I talk about this many, many times in ways, the expectations that they have are probably for me, the most difficult part of caddying to navigate. Um, I follow a guy on X slash Twitter Lou Stagner, who's always throwing out these awesome statistics. Uh, for instance, once I saw one the other day that professional golfers from the fairway 100 yards away miss the green 20% of the time. That yeah. would probably blow people away to find that yeah. statistic out. Yeah. And 100% of our golfers think they're going to hit the green. Yeah. And not only that, they're going to get within 5 to 10 feet of the hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because they're perfectionists or they, they just really want to do well. And uh, so those statistics, all of a sudden, you know, like you are you have them in mind when a player steps up for a 10-foot putt. You know how often even the best golfers in the world miss that yeah. putt. Yeah, no and, doubt. And um, it's hard for us to get it into our heads as amateur golfers that – the success rate isn't always going to be where we want it to be. So I find that to be probably one of the more challenging aspects of caddying in a place like we do. And then obviously uh, some other things that are different. And I've, I've been with you on one. I think um, you ended up walking over 10 miles on a loop one time when we were together because your players had you zigzagging from one side to the other, the whole round. And uh, right? I just yeah. remember, I remember being thankful that I carried the other people's bags. Cause <laughs> if I remember correctly, I was going down in a pretty straight line 
all the day. So, you know, there's days it can be pretty exhausting as well. So, you know, folks, as we talk about our experiences as caddies, they're going to be very, very different in most uh, situations than what you see on television. And, uh, you know, it's not always going to be this great technical expertise about uh, what speed the greens are rolling at or that we handed the player the exact right club and they were able to, um, you know, put it, uh, you know, right next to the hole. It, it it doesn't always happen like that. But what does happen is throughout the course of the day, we have the opportunity to help that person come closer to their potential. And even when they don't, we have the opportunity to help that person enjoy the day a little bit more by continuing to encourage them and support them and to help them put all things in perspective. Um, Nick, you know, there's a lot more to the job, uh, as I, as we're mentioning, than people expect. And, and throughout this podcast, we're going to be touching on a variety of topics. Some of them are going to be, um, you know, themes that we see over and over again. I'm of the belief, and and this is one of the reasons that I've fallen in love with this job and why it's been so meaningful for me, golf mirrors life in countless regards. And uh, so we're going to be talking about some of those ways that it does it. For instance, emotional maturity is something that I have come to understand a lot more. It was something that I was lacking in my life uh, for many, many years, how I dealt with you know, difficulty, a lack of success, how I dealt with anxiety, all those things. And now I get to see up close and personal as the caddy who's maybe detached from some of the struggles of the day, how players deal with success or how they deal with failure. And I think you've been there many a times where you've seen a player uh, blow up, for instance, uh, when they're having a bad day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and so we can see in that regard, you know, having a little bit of emotional maturity is going to make a difference on maybe how that round turns around or just how they enjoy the trip that they're on and whether or not they are thankful that they spent all that money to come to a beautiful place and they're experiencing beautiful weather with family or friends or whatever. Are they going to let a round of golf ruin it or are they going to kind of see it as it is what it is? So, you know, there's ways that you can take those lessons of how we handle things on the golf course and then relay it to how we might handle things at work or in our family and vice versa. We can see how we have some struggles uh, or how we're good at things at work or at home. And we can bring those things to the golf course to maybe improve our game a little bit in those regards. You know, we're not going to be ripping on players all the time. We're not here to embarrass anybody. We're not just going to tell a bunch of stories about guys throwing clubs or dropping the F-bomb or getting upset all the time. Uh, And we're going to be vague enough about some things so that, you know, you don't have to worry if you're out there. We're not calling you out uh, so that uh, you have to be scared to ever come back or ever get a caddy again. That's not what we're about. But in that light, Nick, uh, Mm -hmm. why don't we give the listeners a little bit of a taste of the types of experiences we have. Maybe you can go first by sharing something that wasn't as enjoyable for you from the past season or a previous season, something, a day that you wish you could maybe take back or um, a negative experience you had out there and what you learned from it. Okay. Well, yeah. So, I mean, the bad weather days are always miserable and stuff like that. So I'll probably just avoid that. Um, But yeah. So I, I guess one of the stories that comes to mind um, is I was caddying for a father and son on, on Father's Day. Uh, son paid for, for you know, everything. Uh, really nice guy. Um, so his dad's not playing great. Uh, let's say that. And uh, we get the whole six and dad misses a putt that he feels like he should make, probably a 10-footer. I assume, um, you know, those are always easy to make. And, uh, so he misses his putt and I have the bags over on the backside of the green 
Um, and after he misses his putt, he takes his putter and just launches it, helicopters it near the bags, uh, <laughs> ends up hitting his son's driver, knocks the head right off. So, so his son that's paid for everything all day, <laughs> just actually a really good golfer too, like scratch and, and is playing very well, uh, has to play the rest of his round without, without a driver. Um, <laughs> So, because his dad, you know, broke his driver. So that yeah. was, I don't know. It's, it's all about like managing expectations and stuff like that, obviously, as we talk about a lot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a horror story, yeah. I so guess. So an already expensive day became a whole lot more expensive. Yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah, you know, I think every caddy has a player throwing clubs story um, mm -hmm. that uh, is, is kind of... Uh, you just sit there and you, you you stay quiet, you stay silent or for the most part. And you just wonder, you know, did that really help them? Was there any benefit to kind of losing yeah. it like that? Mm -hmm. And uh, but in the moment, it's awfully hard to convince uh, people that that's a counterproductive way of dealing with it, because uh, it's kind of become for many people just kind of acceptable or the norm when you're in golf to just scream or to get angry yeah. and to be, you know, it, it, I, I think some people think that's just what you're supposed to do. Yeah, uh, well, so, you know, so, oh, so I was going to say, uh, so when I first started playing, I was kind of a, a, maybe a club throw a little bit of a hothead. And um, I mean, you know, what helped me is, is that I was just telling myself that uh, everyone's going to hit bad shots, no matter how good you are, you can be the best player in the world. You're going to hit a bad shot. Uh, it's all about trying to play the next shot. Um, and, and that might be a shot you've never hit before, you know, and, and it's going to be exciting. And, uh, so that's a better way to look at it for me. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, it, it, and you hit it there. It's like, everybody's going to hit bad shots. You know, it's just a, yeah, maybe exactly. a different degree of, of bad, but there's not even like the best players in the world. Don't go out and every week hit it like yep. they want exactly. to, or like they're capable of. And so, you know, we have to be careful to expect that we're going to do that. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, I'll go the flip side of a father-son experience. You shared maybe a uh, negative interaction. I'll share a very positive one from this last year. It just comes to mind for as something that's like, wow, I can't believe that I got to do this and experience this and get paid for it. You got to preface it by saying this, that I had tweeted out a few days before this, just two or three days before this, that um, one of the par three holes on our course, I had had a number of players in the like previous week come within a foot or less of a hole in one. And it's a really hard hole. And those shots in themselves were amazing. One of them even hit kind of the flag and then bounced back. And it was like a, half of a rotation of a ball from going in and the guy had hit it from 190 yards or so and uh, into a stiff wind. It would have been amazing. And uh, I was thinking one day how he must, he, he must be still thinking about that shot because uh, I still was. And so I tweeted out about it and I said, somebody's due. Someone's due because it's people have been too close. So a few days later, I'm caddying for this father and son and they're very nondescript people. They were not like, I mean, they were good people, but they weren't like super outgoing. Yeah. Um, not like they were, they were like, and they were like your garden variety golfers that we see, you know, like yeah. very, there were some good ones. There were some bad ones. The, the father though, you know, he had blown up some holes heading into this seventh hole. And, um, I just, I wouldn't have expected this, but I made just, you're making conversation. And I, I said how I've had, you know, all these players get close over the last week. Um, somebody's due. And it, for some reason that must've sparked something in the sun. And he pulls out his phone and um, he, or actually he sparked something in the dad. It was the dad who pulled out his phone, which was even more surprising. And he gave it to the son and he told him to record him. And, mm -hmm they weren't like these people who were like, we see people who record their shots or are taking pictures all the, they were not these kind of people. It was like a one-off. 
Wow. And uh, he uh, gets up to the tee box. He doesn't take a bunch of practice swings. He doesn't, you know, take a bunch of time. He just steps up, hits the ball, and you see, oh, my, he hit a good shot. <laughs> then all of a sudden you see, like, oh, he hit a really good shot. And then you see it hit the ground and start rolling, and you're like, oh, my gosh, go in the hole. And then it goes in the hole, and yeah. my big self starts celebrating and dancing all over the yeah. place and hugging him. I think I hugged him before his son did. And I'm like, how amazing is that? That yeah. not only did I get to witness that, but a father mm -hmm. and son who didn't don't live by each other anymore, so this was a fly-to-see-each-other kind of okay. event, nice. um, that they get together for a golf trip, which for fathers and sons can be just such special moments. And they were given a memory that is going to last them forever. Yeah. And um, I, it was just, it's, it's something that I'll never forget. And, you know, I know there are some caddies out there who are like, you know, players, you know, you meet them, you caddy for them, and then you forget them before you drive away. And then there's certainly some days that are like that or whatever, but mm -hmm. I just love that we get to be a part of people's special moments like yeah. that. And yeah, lifetime memories. Leave an indelible yeah. mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, many times I've been like taking a, a group picture and I'm like, man, this is probably going to be like on someone's wall someday. And it's like, yeah. that that's really cool. Yeah. And I yeah. try to remember when we're caddying because, and I, and I think about this, like I relate it to when I go to the doctor. One of the things that can frustrate me sometimes, whether it's the doctor, the dentist, whomever, and they don't have good bedside manners or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll cut them some slack and say, well, they, they, they're doing this 50 times today and they're yeah. busy and mm -hmm. um, I'm just, they don't, they, they're maybe forgetting that for me, this is the biggest thing I've got going on in my life yeah. right now. Yeah. And as a caddy, I do sincerely try to remember for these people they spent a lot of money and this is the biggest thing they got going on in their life today. Or maybe for some, it's something they, they they've been texting their buddies back and forth for a year planning yep. for it. And so you do want to help them have the best experience they can have. There's no doubt. Some days it's easier than others to keep that love for the people that are out there. And we'll talk about that in future podcasts. I'm sure. Uh, but you're part of people's special day. Like you said, you're going to see yourself on, somebody's wall yeah and uh right that's going to be a moment that they remember forever and uh so yeah when we take a picture we've taken thousands of them and you take them you know you take yeah. one or two or three or more every round it, it becomes routine for us or maybe even sometimes i think guys could get annoyed by it but for them it, it's pretty big and i like being a part of that i like being able to help them have the best day that they can have. And to me, that goes beyond just giving them golf knowledge. Most days it, it becomes, you know, giving them good knowledge about the course, good stories, good uh, friendly interaction, whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, but I think it's safe to say, Nick, you know, you know, never know what you're going to get out there. One day is very different than the other. Don't you think? Yeah. I think that's like uh, what kind of, like adds the excitement of the job honestly is that yeah it's kind of luck of the draw you know you never you never know what you're gonna get some days you're gonna get somebody who's really cool and fun and friendly and the next day you're gonna get somebody who's like super passive aggressive and just weird and but that's all right comes with yeah, the job yeah no you're right you're it's it, it, it i've seen it many a times just i'm thinking back to this season where you might be nestled in the middle of people and the person in front of you and the person behind yeah. you had a bad day and you're like, oh, man, I want to like go home with the people I had. And then, uh, or vice versa. You just, yeah. you really never know what you're going to get. And, um, so there's always, a, even if you do this for a few years, maybe you can speak to this doing it for uh, 14 years. There's, always still maybe just a touch of anxiety or nervousness as you head oh, up to the bag drop. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. No <laughs> doubt. Yeah. And like, once you see your guy, you know, maybe he's like wearing something super weird, like a kilt or something like that. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I've met people that, I, you know, you judge right away poorly and, and they turn out to be really awesome people and vice versa. So uh, you can't always uh, judge a book by its cover, uh, so especially in our case. 
Yeah, but you know, we're, we caddies are good at that. You know, I've I've seen many caddies uh, within a two minutes of meeting people at the bag mm. drop determine how much money they're going to get tipped that day, whether they're going to be this or that. Yeah. You're right. There's some times that you're really surprised. Well, there's some times that you're not. But uh, yeah, true. You, you just never know what you're going to get. Every day is different. Every day is a new opportunity, and it's a, a beautiful thing. And so those of you listening in, we hope you'll join us in future episodes where we get a little bit more detailed on a specific topic and we bring other guests in. Today for this inaugural first edition of Caddy Tales, we wanted to maybe just give you an introduction to ourselves and a little bit of uh, the background on the types of things that we're going to be talking about. Nick, uh, I hope that you'll be... uh, Excited to join us here in future weeks. Oh, yeah. I, I joked with you over text that um, this is you're going to be like the AJ Hawk to my Pat McAfee. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, yep. hopefully you talk a little bit more than AJ does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it just feels like one of our loops together, to be honest. Like, I just yeah. let you go. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So listen. when Nick and I uh, loop together, we definitely have a, you know, we have a good understanding of each person's strengths and Mm -hmm. uh, limitations. And so, um, yeah, that we're going to try to play off those things even here today. Uh, You know, Nick, um, I'm going to invite people now to go ahead and find me on X, if they don't already, at Caddy Tales, C-A-D-D-I-E-T-A-L-E-S, or you can type in Mark the Caddy. And I uh, have a lot of daily interactions with people on there. And it's been really uh, remarkable. Golf brings people together. It really does. It's, it's, it's an inherently social game, even though it's an individual sport. Yeah. And it, it, I've loved how it brings people together. And so I've made friends uh, through my interactions on X. And I um, have made contacts. And I have you know, messages from people. I actually had a player uh, that I had this last season texting me during Michigan's playoff run. For those of you who don't know, I'm a diehard Michigan fan as well as a Lions fan. And uh, he he's an Ohio State fan and he's texting me congratulations. Oh, Nick, by the way, tell the uh, tell the listeners who you're a fan of. Yeah, I'm an I'm an Alabama fan. So uh, congrats on your national title, Mark. It, o- it only costs us one legendary coach. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Congrats. We're the, we're the we we uh we broke his spirit, I guess. But uh, no. But uh, anyways, um, this this Ohio State fan is texting me congratulations during the game, and I'm like, how awesome, you know, that I've made this contact who is uh, excited for me uh, because we spent a day together, and it was a special day. I'm going out for lunch with a guy in a few weeks that uh, I have met through there, and so it's awesome. So find me at Caddy Tales, and then also. I do want to invite you, if you haven't already, I have a book out by the same title, Caddy Tales, uh, a looper search for lost golf balls and what he found instead. And that digs a little bit deeper into what I touched on at the beginning of the podcast, how I blew my life up, how I hurt myself and others and uh, brought shame to myself and uh, needed, needed to believe that there was light at the end of the tunnel and how caddying played an integral role in that so you can go to amazon and find that or if you want to you can find me on x and order it from me directly i'm running a promotion right now uh where if you buy a uh, signed personalized copy you also get entered into a contest to win two practice round tickets to the masters in augusta so if that's a, a dream for you to get there then uh hit me up and we will give you a chance to make magic happen So, Nick, I really appreciate this time. We're excited to do this. We'll look forward to being with you in future episodes. And all you listening out there, uh, thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you again next time. And something that I'm going to remind you is uh, something that uh, I've learned uh, about the game of golf, and I carry it with me every day. And so at the end of each episode, I'm just going to remind you that there's always a next shot. So take it. You never know what kind of beautiful things lay at the uh, other end of it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time on Caddy Tales. Mm -hmm.